To download Eclipse, first you need to get to the Eclipse website. And I'm going to jump directly to the Eclipse Downloads page. And you want to download Eclipse IDE for Java developers. And you want to make sure you select the appropriate link for your operating system. If you're not sure whether you have a 32-bit or 64-bit operating system, you can go ahead and download the 32-bit version of Eclipse. It will run on any platform. The advantage of a 64-bit machine and downloading Eclipse in 64 bits if you have it is that it can take advantage of your extra memory if you have more than 2 gigs of RAM in your machine. Once your download of Eclipse is completed, you should see some kind of a compressed file. And if you double click on it, I believe this folder contains the Eclipse application. So if you'd like to install Eclipse, at least on the Macintosh version, all you have to do is drag and drop the Eclipse folder to somewhere else, let's say on your desktop, or you can put it in your application directory. For now, I'm going to leave it on my desktop. The first time you open Eclipse, you're going to be taken to a specific window. The first step is to choose your workspace. Your workspace is going to contain all of your projects during the course and any Java projects you work on at Montclair. So you want to pick a location that you can use all the time. If you have a laptop, you can put it wherever you like. I recommend your documents folder or perhaps your desktop. If you plan to go back and forth between multiple machines, such as the lab machines to your home machine, then you're going to want to select your workspace to be on a USB drive, some kind of portable drive that's readable and writable so that you can bring with you. So to change the default location, you can hit the Browse button, and I'm going to navigate to my USB drive. And I'm going to create a new folder called Workspace. So this will create my Eclipse workspace on my USB drive, and all of my projects will get stored there. Once Eclipse is open, you want to go directly to the workbench, and this should be the last time that you see this screen. So the Eclipse workbench includes a package explorer, which is where you'll see all of your projects. If you have any errors in your code, if you run your code and you see output, that'll occur down here. To the right, there's an outline view and a task list. We don't need the task list, and I prefer not to have it in my view, and so I close it. But if you notice that you screwed something up in your view, let's say you accidentally closed the outline and the package explorer views, and you really, really want them back. If you go to Window and Reset Perspective, it'll bring everything back by default. The next step is to create your very first Java project. So there's a couple ways to do that. One way is to go to File, New, Java Project, or File, Project, Java Project. And we'll make this our very first project. And I've got a version of Java associated with my Eclipse, so I'll be able to execute Java. And I leave everything else the same.
Now we have our first Java project. Inside is a source folder, but obviously we haven't created any class files yet, so it's empty. If I want to create a new class file in here, I can just right click on it and go to New Class. I'm going to call this class Hello World Class. I want to include a main and I'd like it to automatically generate some comments for me. So we can see the Hello World class is now included and we have some basic comments included in our class as well as a main. I'm going to make my program do something, just print out hello world. If you see a star next to the name of your file, that means it's been edited and not saved yet. So you can save and that will go away. You can also go to file, save. To run this main, you can go to the green button up here, or you can right click on it and go to run as Java application. And we can see the console came up and that our code was executed and then it printed out hello world.